Hi, not sure where you're listening from, but I'm in Tennessee and it's chilly here today. So I am sitting in front of the fireplace and I'm gonna read you a book um, about Galileo Galilei. Have you heard of him? So he lived, I don't know, about close to 400 years ago, I guess. And he made an incredible discovery when he was looking at through a telescope up at the stars. And this book is gonna tell you about that and some of um, his own words are in here and some of his drawings. So he was a very brave man and courageous, but all of a sudden he said um, that the planets revolved around the, do you know, the sun and nobody had believed that before. So do you think people were excited that he found something new or do you think they were making fun of him and were angry? Um, it was the second. I'm not sure that the book addresses it because I'll be honest with you, I've never read this book before. It's been on my shelf for a long time and I decided it was time. Okay, so it says for hundreds of years, most people thought the earth was the center of the universe and the sun and the moon and all the other planets revolved around it. They did not doubt or wonder if this was true. They just followed tradition. Then one man looked at the sky and wondered, what if things are not as everybody believes them to be? Maybe the earth and the other planets move around the sun. He wrote down his observations, but he did not talk about them, and he did not publish them for a long, long time. He knew he could not prove they were true. It would take someone else to do that. The one man looked at the sky and wondered. I'm sorry, I read that already. In those days, Italy was a country where many great artists, writers, and musicians and scholars lived. So this was the Italy where he grew up in. Um, if you don't know, Italy looks like a boot, doesn't it? And then this little island is Sicily. So Italy is kicking Sicily. That's how we can remember that. It says Galileo was born in 1564 on February 15th. In the city of Pisa, a little boy was born with stars in his eyes. His parents named him Galileo. There's all the babies. You can see which one's him. All the stars. Have you ever heard of Pisa before? It's a city in Italy and that's, it's famous for the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So if you look it up with your parents' permission, uh, it's a, t a long tower, but it's all, it's leaning one side. Galileo thrived and he grew. In many ways, he was like any other child but he was more curious than most and stars were always on his mind. Until the age of 11, Galileo was taught at home by his father. Then he was sent to the Benedictine Monastery of Santa Maria di Volumbroso, where he studied Latin, Greek, religion, and music. Can you find Galileo on there? He's probably got some stars by him. He studied mathematics and physics and turned out to be a very bright young man who entertained and amused people with his brilliant experiments and observations. Galileo is our star, the people would say. It says, in 1581, he entered the University of Pisa, was an argumentative student and questioned the teachings of Aristotle. 
left the university to study mathematics and physics in his own town, became professor of mathematics and the University of Pisa when he was just 25 years old. He did an experiment and he proved Aristotle wrong. He discovered the law of falling objects by showing that two balls of unequal weight fall at the same speed. So one day he was bored and he was watching this, um, I don't remember if it was a light fixture, I think it was a light fixture and it was swinging back and forth and he was counting. And so he was figuring something out. And here's that tower I was telling you about, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Then one day Galileo heard about a new instrument for seeing things far, far away. He figured out how it worked and made one for himself. Then he turned it to the sky. It says, a report reached my eyes, I mean ears, Oops. a report reached my ears that a certain Fleming had constructed a spyglass. Upon hearing the news, I set myself to thinking about the problem. Finally, spawning neither labor nor sparing neither labor nor expense, I succeeded in constructing for myself so excellent an instrument that objects seen by means of it appeared nearly 1,000 times larger and over 30 times closer than when I regarded with our natural vision. So that is what he wrote um, in 1611. And if you were wondering why I was struggling, look how tiny that cursive writing is. So that's something he said. And he found out that he could look at the stars and bring them closer. And he heard about it and then he built himself one. Night after night, he gazed through the telescope and wrote down everything he observed. Then he published his observations in a book, which he called The Starry Messenger. And these are all different notes that he took. So if this is a book that sounds very interesting to you and you would like to read all his personal notes, then you should go get this at the library or um, order it because you can then read other things that he wrote. I'm not reading all of his, mess his notes. I'm reading more of just what the author of the book wrote. Galileo was amazed by what he could see with his telescope. Here's one of his notes that he wrote. I have no doubt whatever that they are real objects and not mere appearances or illusions of the eye or the lenses of the telescope. People read Galileo's book and they became inspired. He made maps of the heavens and dedicated the four newly discovered stars of Jupiter to his patron and ruler, the Grand Duke of Tuscany, Cosimo II. It says, gifts of a telescope and the copy of Galileo's book were sent to all the kings and princesses of Europe and Galileo was named Chief Philosopher and Mathematics to the Medici Court. Soon Galileo was famous. More and more people celebrated the stars and they celebrated Galileo and his discoveries with statues and parades and spectacular events. His fame grew and the celebrations became extravaganzas. But now the church began to worry. So the Catholic church was very popular, uh, very powerful, I should say, um, at that time. And they had said something else. And so Galileo was going against what the church, the Catholic church was teaching. And so he began to worry and he should have. Galileo had become too popular. By holding the idea that the earth was not the center of the universe, he had gone against 
It says against the Bible, but that's not actually true. Peter. Um, he had gone against the Catholic Church and what they were believing the Bible taught at that time. Um, he had gone against the Catholic Church. Galileo was ordered to stop believing what he could see with his own eyes. He was summoned to appear before the highest ruler of the land, the Pope. So he could see something with the telescope and they were saying, you can't believe that and you definitely can't teach it. Galileo was afraid. He knew that people had suffered terrible torture and punishment for not following tradition. It could happen to him. And then let's see what he wrote on that. If they had seen what we see, they would have judged as we judge. So he was saying the ancient philosophers, if they would have been able to see, they would have agreed with that too. I don't care for this picture. So look away if you want. He was tried in the Pope's court and everyone could see that he had stars, that the stars had left his eyes. So they held a meeting and they call that an inquisition. And they said that he was guilty of heresy. And that's a big word that says he was guilty of going against what the Bible said, even though I'm, it was really just the church. Galileo was condemned to spend the rest of his life locked in his house under guard. But he still had stars on his mind, and no one could keep him from thinking about the wonders of the skies and the mysteries of the universe. And even when he went blind, no one could keep him from passing his ideas along to others until the day he died. But his ideas still live on. Finally, more than 300 years later, the leaders of the very church that had punished Galileo pardoned him, and they admitted that he was probably, in fact, surely absolutely right. So this is kind of a different book from the normal books that I read, but I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share with you how brave and smart um, and that he had a lifelong desire to keep learning and I, I hope that for all of you as well. Starry Messenger.